When members of the public are not allowed to come in during witness testimony, does that violate the defendant's right to a public trial? To find out, you have to read People versus Muhammad, but it's 16 pages. Don't have time for that? I've got you covered. This is TLDR, Too Long Didn't Read, where I cover New York Court of Appeals cases, and I try to do it in five minutes or less. This is the episode on the case of People versus Hansa Mohammed. The citation for this case is 2023, New York Slip Opinion 02756, published by the New York Court of Appeals on May 23rd of 2023. The issue in this case is, does excluding the public from the courtroom, from a criminal trial during the witness testimony, uh, violate the Sixth Amendment right to a public trial. To understand what's going on here, just a little bit of background, there's a Sixth Amendment, to the, the Sixth Amendment of the Bill of Rights to the United States Constitution says, this is the beginning of it, it's, it's, it's a long one, but it says, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial. The public trial is the important part here. The Sixth Amendment also has the right to counsel, uh, compulsory process, those things. But the important part for this case is the public trial uh, promise by the Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution. The facts of this case are the defendant is on trial for second-degree murder and criminal possession of a weapon, uh, and the trial judge here has a policy. It's a policy that no person is allowed to enter or exit the courtroom while a witness is testifying. And the judge justifies this policy by saying he believes that spectator traffic during testimony distracts witnesses, attorneys, jurors, and the court reporter. The defendant did not object during this trial to that policy. On the third day of trial, the victim's family and the defendant's family come to court around 8.50 a.m. before the trial starts, and they hand in their phones to the court officer at the door, and the court officer never tells them that they can come in. And it turns out that the, the, the prosecution's witness goes through an entire direct and five minutes across before someone alerts the prosecutor that there's witnesses outside, uh, family members outside that want to come in, and the, the, the prosecutor notifies the court, and the court then stops the proceeding. Um, excuses the jury for a second, brings in the family members, and then resumes the trial. The next day, the judge has a whole hearing about whether or not this violated the defendant's Sixth Amendment right to a public uh, trial. And the judge finds, the judge, the trial judge, on a motion for mistrial, where the defense said, judge, you've deprived my client of a fair trial pursuant to the Sixth Amendment, a public trial. The judge finds that the court did not implicitly or explicitly exclude the public. That the witnesses, the, the outside people, the, the public did not try to gain access to the courtroom. And instead, they waited outside just assuming that the access was not permitted. But it's not the court's fault that they didn't go in. It's their fault. So the judge says, denied. I'm not granting your mistrial. And the defendant is ultimately convicted of both counts. And the defendant appeals. The, former, the appellate division, the, the procedural posture here, the, the, proce the procedural history is the appellate division says the judge was the judge did exclude the public. The public was excluded, but not because of anything the judge did. Um, that, in fact, the public was excluded, but not because of any specific act by the court. And it goes to the Court of Appeals, and they they reverse. The Court of Appeals says that yes, there was a Sixth Amendment violation here, and the Sixth Amendment is important because the presence of the public this is what they say. The presence of the public is important to the to the accused. It's a benefit to the accused because it keeps. The witness's sense of responsibility and importance of their functions. It prevents perjury. It, it encourages witnesses to come forward. Basically, they say the Sixth Amendment is in benefit and asset of the accused, of the defendant here. And the failure to, to allow the public to be present for the witness testimony was a deprivation. And was it the court's fault? Yes, it was, they say. And it was because it was the judge's policy and the judge had delegated this policy to the court officers to execute. And even if they executed it poorly, even if they didn't properly tell the public, you can come in now. They should have done that. But because it was a judge's policy and the court staff failed to allow the witnesses, allow, allow, the, allow the public to come in, that's the deprivation of constitutional rights uh, here. And re reversal is required. They say, we can't just uh, let the let the the it wouldn't be a proper remedy to just have the witness testify again because it's damaging. That's a damaging thing for the defendant. Um, and they also reiterate that the judge is responsible for the administration of justice in the courtroom. The judge's re responsibility includes decorum, uh, proper administration of the of the trial to make sure that constitutional rights are protected in the courtroom. And so here there was a failure, a deprivation, 
and reversal is required. There is a concurrence by Judge Garcia. He basically makes the same point as the majority. And essentially, that's the holding of People versus Muhammad. Have a good day. If you like what you just saw and want to see more just like it, please hit like or subscribe to let me know.